It's Friday, November 18, and time for the Barbados Today Morning Update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. A verbal battle of the highest order is developing between the Prime Minister, Frondel Stewart, and the National Union of Public Workers. This as the union, which initiated industrial action at the island's ports of entry, sends a less than subtle warning to the Prime Minister that its members can vote him out of office. On Wednesday, the Prime Minister accused the NUPW of attempting to blackmail his government into reversing a decision to revert its President Akani McDowell to a junior position in the public service from an acting senior post. The union's acting Deputy General Secretary, Delcia Book, hit back at the Prime Minister, describing his comment as one made in the heat of the moment, and she cautioned him not to try to interfere with the way the trade unions conduct business. I think that the Prime Minister understands that the workers are the persons who would be responsible for him and his cabinet being there. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, I think that that would be very, a very dangerous thing to do. I, and I think that the backlash would be extremely severe. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, at, the, at the moment, uh, your, in, your industrial actions are continuing? As yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and in your estimation, how are those going? Well, as far as our reports are there, have been going very well and based on um, comments we have heard from other persons who would have been affected by the action, they seem to have had some sort of impact. Okay. In other news, Prime Minister Frandall Stewart gives the strongest indication yet that he is close to a decision on the controversial Hyatt Hotel project. Speaking to journalists re recently, the island's leader revealed that he was in possession of most of the information needed for a decision on building permission for the 237-room hotel on Kailail Bay. The, the matter is receiving attention. I recently did a visit to the site of the project, uh, as proposed, to make certain assessments as a result of that visit. Uh, uh, certain requests for additional information uh, were made, um, as I understand it, those requests have been complied with within the deadlines set, and therefore I am just awaiting um, the outcome of those, uh, the assessment of those, of those bits of information so that I can make a point. The proposed 15-storey property has met with opposition from the Barbados National Trust and social activist David Commissar on the grounds that the designated building site is on the list of UNESCO, UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. Plans to impose a 20 cents fee for each plastic shopping bag by May next year is not sitting well with the island's consumer rights body. In fact, Director General of the Barbados Consumer Research Association, Malcolm Gibbs Tate, described the move as foolishness and absolute nonsense. And while he agreed that the country must find ways to limit its use of plastic bags and other harmful items, he said slapping a charge was not the way to go. It would have been better if they had got together with the business people to reduce their use of plastics so that the customer didn't get it in the first place. Not, not to charge the customers for a convenience, but that's all it is. People will take home a bag and the unfortunate thing is they don't dispose of it care carefully. I shudder to think what, what it, it will not be too long before somebody thinks that the air we breathe, we should pay for it. It is not going to be long. 21-year-old Shaquille Romario Jabari Hinkson yesterday began a 28-day stint at HMP Dodds on murder and firearm charges. Hinkson of Melvin's Avenue, Black Rock St. Michael, appeared in the District A Magistrate's Court charged with the murder of Jesse David Moore. The 33-year-old Moor of Free Hill, Black Rock, St. Michael, was fatally shot on November 6 while atten attending a fete at Plum Tree Road, St. Stephen's, in the same parish. Hinkson is also accused of causing serious bodily harm to Torian Gibson, 
with intent to maim, disfigure, or disable him, or to do some serious bodily harm to him. And he is also charged with using a firearm without a valid license. All three charges are indictable, and Hinkson was therefore not required to plea. The accused man, who is represented by attorney at law Andrew Pilgrim QC, is scheduled to make his second appearance in the District A Magistrates No. 1 Court on December 15. In sports, Springer Memorial are still the queens of under-19 netball. The young ladies captured their second consecutive title of the Barbados Secondary Schools and Netball League competition by defeating Queen's College 22-16 yesterday at the Netball Stadium. The Most Valuable Player Award went to Springer Memorial's goal attack, Rashana Thorne, who netted 14 goals out of 20 attempts. There's regional and international news after this short break. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, 220. Who? For what? That is bear stare news. I don't read about that from Barbados today since last night. That can only can do. 220, who? The Barbados Today, news you can trust. Public bank just like Santa Claus. Maisie fix up the kitchen and a new TV we get in. A special time to commemorate. Republic will help you celebrate. Get ready to celebrate 50 years of independence right through to the best page in Christmas ever with a make it happen loan of up to $50,000 from Republic Bank. Give your home a good old beige and spruce up. Buy some new furniture and appliances or take an after holiday trip to visit loved ones over and away. You could also be one of our lucky winners to share in fabulous prizes. Just visit any branch to apply. Go to republicbarbados.com or call us at 227-2700. We're also available via Skype and FaceTime. Special conditions apply. Public Bank, we're the one for you. We pick up with news from the region. Bahamian Prime Minister Perry Christie says the country's recovery from Hurricane Matthew will take longer than anticipated. He says millions have been spent on cleanup efforts and there's still a lot more work to be done. Clint Watson of ZNS News has more. The government had intended to have a significant portion of the $120 million that it's borrowing from local commercial banks for hurricane restoration advanced in order to jumpstart the work. However, according to Prime Minister Right Honorable Perry Christie, that didn't happen. We've had to finance hurricane repairs from our revenue base and the cash flow of the government. And um, we lost about two weeks of revenue, which I suppose would approximate um, 40, 50, 60, um, and the given revenue today could even be as much as $80 million and, and the, in terms of lot revenue. And so it's been a process where we have tried to accommodate um, the minister responsible for hurricane repairs by delaying um, some payments and putting funds towards hurricane restoration whilst we process this, this loan. The Prime Minister says he believes they are now at the stage to overcome that hurdle and can move much more effectively with government, segmenting government revenue from the proceeds of the loan. He says the repair and restoration effort is a difficult one, and some may even underestimate the enormity of what the country faces following Hurricane Matthew. We've spent some $7 million on counting today on cleaning up, and we still have a mammoth task of, of cleaning up. And finally, officials say at least 73 people have been killed in a fuel truck explosion in Mozambique. A, a government statement said people were trying to take petrol from the truck when it exploded in a village near the border with Malawi. More than 100 others were injured, some of them critically. And on that note, we come to the end of our news update, but visit our website www.barbidestudy.bb for all the latest news and sports. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Or you can tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good morning.